What's up, YouTubers? All right, Project Ultra Redemption. I'm digging elbow deep into it right now. We know there's a bad hole. Last night, Mike and I determined that it's this cylinder right here that is low on compression. The other two were great. This one's bad. So I'm gonna pull the water cover off, the head off, dig into it and find out what's going on here. Project Redemption called Ultra Redemption. Well, there's always a story behind all my sled projects, the names of them. Back in the mid 90s, I owned an Ultra. I had a 96 Ultra RMK and it was a great sled. It was uh, 136 with an inch and a half paddle track on it, had reverse. I kind of made it into more of a flatland trail sled. I lowered it down. I put an XCR seat and tank set up on it. It was a really fun sled. But after the second time I seized up the cylinder on it, I was done with that sled. I actually ended up selling it to a guy with one of the cylinders still seized in it because I was just like, there was no reason for it to seize. And it did it twice and I was just like, you know what? I'm moving on, never owned in one sense. And this one came up on that auction. I'm like, let me try it again. Maybe a few more years of knowledge and experience. I can make one of these things run and purr down the trail like they should. So Project Ultra Redemption, here we go. Let's dig into this thing. Let's see what's going on down the cylinder. Trent and I are going up hunting this week and we're actually gonna go buy some more carcasses and parts and whatnot. And I gotta figure out what I'm gonna need here because maybe this guy's gonna have the parts to fix this motor while I'm up there. So let's get this thing tore apart. Some people use those spring hooks. I don't know. I don't believe in them. I don't like them. I just like a good old fashioned vice grip. It's always worked for me. That's always a good sign, there's no mouse nest in there.
Try and keep some of the antifreeze out of the holes. This is the part I don't like, is taking the antifreeze apart. I've always thought about making some kind of a big pan or make an extraction system for doing this. I'm always uh, too lazy to do it. I don't know why I haven't done it, but I should. I just put a bunch of pans underneath the sled and I don't look underneath there and I hope for the best. Well, it's typical, they're missing most of the pans, so I'll have a heck of a mess to clean up off the floor as usual. Oh, there are just a couple buckets here. Just remember, I'm not a mechanic either. I'm a hobbyist. So if I'm doing this all wrong, it's because I'm not a mechanic. see a few things wrong down there. Definitely need a cylinder. Looks like a ring broke. Caught the edges of the ports. Rattled around in there a little bit. It made havoc. So, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised one bit. 
I was figuring I was going to need a piston and a cylinder for sure. It doesn't bother me. Kind of figured going into it. That's what I was going to be expecting. All right, guys, well, I saved you the board of me pulling the cylinder off. Um, thank God I did put the camera on pause because you also missed me completely wiping out on my ass by stepping in this antifreeze with Crocs on. So, yeah, I saved myself some embarrassment on that one. But anyways, what I found pulling it off, yeah, it looks like a, the ring caught the ports or something. So let's take a little peek down in here so we can see what's going on here. Let's get the light on it. Yeah, we got carnage. Carnage, junk, junk cylinder. So I am looking for a cylinder and a piston for this. Set the cylinder off to the side here. Here's the piston. Yeah, we got damage, but it's all fixable. I can handle this. This is no big deal. Done this lots of times already. So check the seat out, guys. Uh, it looks a little splotchy because I just hit it with some more uh, final cleaner. But I rubbed it down with baby oil, uh, let that sit on it all night, and then rubbed it down again tonight with some vinyl cleaner, and I'm going to put some more baby oil on it again. But the nice new luster of this seat is starting to come back out again. I think it's rideable. I'm hoping it doesn't crack. I mean, look at this. This thing is just, it's minty. I, I mean, if I could save that seat, it will be awesome. Ironically, I had a brand new one of these seat covers just a couple weeks ago that I got in a pick and sold it to a guy on Facebook and um, I had a brand new NOS one of these covers and I knew this is what would happen. As soon as I got rid of the cover, I knew one of these damn things would follow me home and that's what happened. You know, I, but whatever. I didn't think I'd ever own another one again. Like I said, I, when I sold mine, the one I had, I think I sold it in like 98, 99 maybe, I vowed to never own another Ultra. I'll give it a try. You know, like I said, Project uh, Ultra Redemption here. We'll see if it works out this time around. And I was taking a look in here. Now that I'm porting Trenton's, uh, the Norge cylinders, these cylinders are actually, the porting arms really clean in there compared to them storm cylinders. But I don't know. I might have to take all three cylinders off so I can check the rods and the crank and everything. Because right down here, with the antifreeze sitting in here now, but these... Thrust bearings, I think, is what these are called. That's what went loose. That's what went out on Trenton's crank. So I wouldn't mind taking each cylinder off and just giving the rods a little wiggle to make sure I don't have any issues down in there before I go ahead to start riding this thing. It does have 5,000 miles on it, so um, being I'm this far into it, i got to buy a gasket kit anyways. I already got the antifreeze mess going on. Might as well pop the other two cylinders off, take a look in there, see what's going on, check everything. Good time to maybe check into the water pump. I hear these have issues on water pumps. So this might be the time to kind of go through this engine. I'd hate to go all the way down to the crank. Um, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to toss the dice out there on this one on the crank. And, you know, hopefully it makes it with the, the crank that's in there. But I think it's a good time to maybe pull this thing down. I'll check crank seals because I'm sure some of you are sitting there right now. Well, what about the crank seals? I'll check them and stuff. No worries there. No worries. Settle down. I'll, I'll take a look at them. So... And I might split it all the way down. We'll see. We'll see how far we get on this thing. So my mind changes really fast. So I might get down there and realize I ain't going to half-ass it. Now i got to split the case halves and put crank seals in it. So, you know, things change. And uh, I might say something now and mean something completely different later. So one thing I can tell you, though, two weeks ago when I did the video of Project Norge, it was snowing outside. And today... It's 72 degrees out. I got a little trickle of sweat coming down from actually tearing this motor down because I was, it was probably from the slip. It might be antifreeze on the side of my face. But, but anyways, 72 degrees outside right now. Two weeks ago, it was 29 degrees and snowing, and I think we got, ended up with a total of 7 and a half, 8 inches, somewhere right around there. So, all right, YouTubers, that's it for now. Project Ultra Redemption is officially started, and we're going to get this thing rolling like a steamroller and get this thing back together and running hopefully soon. I've had a, quite a few of you on YouTube and Facebook reach out to me and share a bunch of knowledge of this sled with me. I really appreciate it, guys. Super, super appreciate it. I'm going to need some help with this one. 
I'm new to the ultras. So I think, thank you guys ahead of time already for helping me on this one. So stay tuned. More to come.